Oh, hey. Oh, it's been too long. Today's video is about people wanting to get involved with open source software and just not knowing where to begin or how to find a code repository that is for them. Both people that are brand new to coding and trying to learn and experienced developers often struggle finding open source projects that they can get involved with. In today's hopefully short video, I'm gonna show you how to really use GitHub's search functionality to find a repository that's just right for you. That will hopefully either let you take your first steps in contributing to a code base, or just help you find other repositories that you can get involved with. So let's get on with the video. Hi folks, my name's Ben. What the? Hi folks, I'm Ben. No, I think it's my name is Ben, no. Hi folks, my name is Ben and welcome back to the channel. First off, just very, very quickly, I want to apologize to those of you that watch my videos on a regular basis for my lack of videos recently. There is no good legitimate excuse for the lack of videos, so I won't waste your time with one. Just perhaps maybe releasing a video every week or every two weeks uh, isn't really doable at the moment. With that said though, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And of course, leave a like if you enjoy the video. So let's get into it. First things first, a massive important note, GitHub, is not Git. Okay, this is really important to say. A lot of people get the two confused and a lot of people use the two interchangeably. Git is a version control software. The short version of it is that it tracks changes to a set of files over time. If you're interested in learning more about Git and how to use it, I have a playlist for that. Link above and of course in the description down below. Whereas GitHub is an online code repository hosting service. You can essentially think of it as the repositories that Git makes, Git that tracks the changes in files over time, GitHub hosts those online for other people to see and pull down and contribute to. The underlying software used um, in GitHub's sort of uh, repo providing service is of course Git. And GitHub of course is one of the, if not the most uh, popular uh, open source repository um, hosting platforms as it is entirely free, entirely transparent, easy to use. And a lot of the big players, a lot of the big code repositories that are quite famous around the world that a lot of developers use and interact with are actually hosted on GitHub. As you can see on my screen here, um, this is a slide that I've used in a recent um, open source contribution uh, presentation um, about big sort of code bases that exist on GitHub. You can see things like Node.js is on GitHub, uh, VS Code, Linux, the kernel is hosted on GitHub, um, the Go language, Kotlin, Swift, all of these big players and many, many more are on GitHub. These code repositories are open and available for you to go and see the code and also contribute to it if you so choose. And that's the topic of today's video. How do you go about finding these repositories on GitHub to contribute to? How do you sort of search through the massive, massive, massive list of repositories that are on GitHub to find ones that you, with your specific uh, skill sets, can contribute to? Or perhaps, how do you find repositories that are good for beginners to get involved with? So let me show you very quickly a powerful, powerful tool that is built into GitHub to help people like you find the repository that is right for you to contribute to. On GitHub, of course, we have the Explore tab right at the top, which is really useful for just sort of perusing around repositories. Um, there's ones that are based on your interests, so GitHub will have um, sort of noted what repositories you're looking at, and they sort of build a list that will help you to start with, that's fine. And there's also, of course, the um, all of these tabs along the top that help you sort of um, find more repositories. So like the trending repositories um, are the ones that are being interacted with a lot at the moment. And that's a really good list to sort of maybe help you dive in as well. And you can filter over here by languages as well, like coding languages um, and sort of date ranges. Of course, there's the topics as well, which is repositories that are sort of grouped together based on topics like Bash or Sketch or Angular or Ajax things. That's a good way to find repos as well. However, the thing that I'm gonna show you today is maybe a little bit less known than the Explore tab. It is Issues tab. The point of the Issues tab is to basically show um, problems that people have attached to certain repositories. So imagine I have a code base. That code base has an Issues section where users and developers can jot down problems that exist in that code base, maybe bugs or maybe to-dos. And then other people, 
can see those issues and can deal with them. They can be like, oh yeah, I'll take that issue. I know how to deal with that thing. Let me deal with it. The issues tab is a really great way to search and filter issues from every single repository in the world. Let me show you what I'm on about. So right now, um, the default filters that have been attached to the issues tab for me are to do with my open issues, okay, that aren't archived. So it just shows me things that are in my repositories. That's fine, but it's not gonna help me explore the world of repositories that exist out there. I'm gonna use this incredibly powerful filtering system here to find repositories that I might be interested in. So first of all, I'm gonna clear most of the filters that I've got so far. I wanna keep this one on the far left is colon open. So these filters are key value pairs essentially. So is and then colon open is the value. So this is basically, this first filter is just saying, is the issue still open? Is it still um, an issue? Is it still a problem that's available? So no one's solved it already. No one's dealt with it. We space separate different filters and we can just add as many as we want here. You can see in my um, history here, there's a couple of um, filters already, but I'm going to go through them. We can then search by language. And this is really the, probably the most important part of it. Language, not as in spoken language, but as in the programming language that that repository uses. So I can do language, colon, no spaces, just language, colon, da, 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 da. And I, maybe like Java, for example, would show me all of the Java repositories or um, shell would show me all of the sort of uh, shell bash repositories or uh, Python. You get the idea. So now our filters say, okay, the issues that are still open and are still a problem that are in Python code bases. So you're narrowing down. You can say, oh, my skill sets are Python. So I'm gonna search for just Python repositories to get involved with. Here's another great one, the label uh, filter. You can see on some of these issues that are already popping up, we've got these like colored blocks here. These are labels. People that create these issues can attach certain labels or certain sort of statuses to these issues. So for example, this one at the top is an enhancement label and it's a good first issue label. And what we can do is we can help narrow down the search if we're perhaps beginners or people that just want to try for the first time or get involved or I'm, I'm quite new to it, we can use the label system to find this good first issue issues, okay? And these are ones that a lot of uh, repositories around the world use, good first issues. They'll attach this label to these issues and then you can search through them for how I'm gonna show you in a second to find issues that are good for beginners. Label, colon, and because this good first issues has spaces inside of it, we need to encapsulate it all within two speech marks. So good first issues inside a speech mark. So good first issue, okay? So now I'm looking for um, issues that are on Python code repositories that are still open and that are have the label good first issue on them. So I'm gonna actually hit enter now with my filter list um, to see the results. And now I'm not looking at things that are authored to me, I got rid of that filter. I'm now looking around the world for things that have this good first issue tag and that are Python code bases. And this now is a list of issues that I can read through and decide, hey, I wanna get involved with that. So for example, I could read, um, this top one, make the student attendance dashboard responsive. It's a front end thing. So you can imagine there's some UI, it's an enhancement. Um, it's good first issues and uh, there's help wanted on it. And what I can do is I can click into that issue now and it will take me to that repository. So in this example, uh, uh, Nepo, um, and it will take me directly to the issues tab of that repository and to the issue that I've clicked. And we can see now that it hasn't been addressed, no one's even written a comment here, and he's given some more information about how to deal with that issue. So that's it, that's all I wanted to show you. This issues tab is a great way to find repositories that might interest you. And uh, there's a link to this page in the description down below. There is a really nice page um, on the GitHub help sections that show you all of these different filter options and what they mean and what they do. So there is loads, as you can see, I'm just sort of gently scrolling through. I won't bother going through any because you can sort of look into this yourself, um, but it gives you an idea of how you can sort of take all of the repositories in the world and narrow it down to things that are relevant to you that you can get involved with. And that's really it. That's all I wanted to show you. So as usual, thank you so much for watching this video. Apologies again about the massive delay um, from the last video release to this one. Hopefully with the current quarantine and lockdown situation, maybe I sort of get my head down and do a couple more of these videos, but don't hold me to that. 
And on that note, I hope everybody is safe and healthy and staying at home. If you've enjoyed this video and like what I do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and of course hit that bell icon to be notified about when I release new videos. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Okay, here we go. You ready? Oh, I didn't even put the lights on. I think the light's pretty good though at the moment, right? It's good to be back. These are dark days in the world. Might as well have a little, little, uh, little YouTube video action. Why not? Mm.